The city of Lund in southern Sweden has seen a thing or two in a thousand years of history. 100,000 people live here, yet despite the tiny population, Lund boasts a university, often ranked among the highest in Scandinavia. And right now it's at the heart of an adventure in the South Atlantic that could radically reshape the way we think about our climate. Professor Svante Björk is leading a mission to a group of remote islands he and his colleagues are the first to study climate change events that have happened here throughout history. Tristan Acuna is situated in a very strategic position in the very middle of the South Atlantic, just north of some of the main oceanographic and um, atmospheric frontal systems. So if big changes have occurred, they should be seen there. They'll be searching for a sedimentary record dating back tens of thousands of years that can then be compared to records from the Northern Hemisphere. We don't really know how the Northern and Southern Hemispheres respond to climate change because these are really grand scale processes. The team had been to Tristan de Cunha before, hitching a ride on a fishing boat out of South Africa, but it meant the research was limited. Nightingale was from the very start, our main goal, because we realized that Tristan has been affected by a volcanism. So it was not very hopeful to get really old sequences on Tristan. But on Nightingale, there are overgrown lakes, which I suspected from the start were pretty old in the bottom. To fully explore Nightingale, the team needed its own boat and that meant a lengthy voyage, this time from the other side of the Atlantic. You can't fly there because it's too far away for helicopters. They have no airport for commercial flights. And uh, the boat is the only way. For me it was a pretty rough experience. I'm prone to seasickness and it's a terribly long trip. But considering the good material we got, yeah, it was worth it. Will I do it again? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> we uh, departed the Falkland Islands about eight days ago and we still have four days to go before we um, estimate the arrival. Much of the world's climate is governed by atmospheric and oceanic systems. Around Tristan de Cunha, the most important are the westerlies the circumpolar current and the subtropical convergence. By uncovering climate records around Tristan, Svante is convinced he will greatly enhance our knowledge of global patterns in the past that will inform the debates around current climate change. We were at sea for 13 days. We sailed a lot. We had nine, ten knots sometimes. So it was, it was a fascinating travel. The night when we arrived to Tristan, it was just a fantastic evening. It was marvelous. It, I will never forget that. You have seven families there, more or less, living. They live on the fishing. They are completely self-sufficient. And they live pretty simple, but very good life. For many, this would seem a remote and isolated place. But the team had more in store and after a brief rest, they set sail again for Nightingale, seen here from the summit of Tristan. It's a very small island, which has never had a human population. It's inhabited by two to three million pairs of petrels, and uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, penguins and albatrosses and staying in this very pristine, very old environment is an amazing natural experience. We started to build up the fieldwork camp and uh, the next day we started to core and came down a few meters further than last time. And then we realized, yes, we got it. Taking samples with a simple hand tool called a Russian core went remarkably well.
buoyed by the early success, they explored further into the island, in all sampling three lakes, pulling up a significant amount of material, and calculating the depths of the cord basins with geoelectric measurements. But the exact age of the material, and therefore the success of the trip, would not be fully known until they were back in Lund, and that was several weeks of challenging sailing away. We started to go uh, southwest, but we re realized we get into real hard storms against us. It's easier to go with the wind, you know. So we tried for a few days, but realized this is not possible. So we started to go north, and then after 33 days of pretty tough circumstances, the food was almost finished. We came to Uruguay, and you can't come to a better place if you long for some relaxation. Back in Sweden, carbon dating showed one of the cores was 36,000 years old, way older than expected. Now we can map in time and space when we have these uh, big shifts in circulation regimes. The studies will now establish records of precipitation and temperature from the southern hemisphere. So we can see when it happened and how big the shifts were at different times and then compare it with what we know from the northern hemisphere where we have a much more detailed record than in the south. What they've already found is the most northerly record of the bipolar seesaw, a phenomenon which shows that when temperatures are rising in the northern hemisphere, conditions become colder in Antarctica and vice versa. This study, I think, will, will produce many different uh, publications. It already has, actually. So it, it has big implications for the whole circulation system. It looks to me right now that it's more complicated than we thought from the start. The full extent of the findings won't be known for some time, but the initial results are encouraging enough to spark a parallel journey to similar latitudes in the Indian Ocean to help colour the picture in yet more detail.